this video goes through how to properly data transfer with the FDR flow sensor using the full time recording function. The full time recording function allows you to pull data off of the FDR, including instantaneous flow, total flow, temperature data, as well as events, which I'll discuss a little bit further later on, and export all this information to a CSV file, which can be used in Excel to create reports or charts like you can see on the right hand side of your screen. I just want to quickly highlight the different cables and adapters necessary to connect an FDR to a computer. First being uh, OP-26487. This is an RJ11 to RJ11 cable. That cable will then connect into OP-26401, which is a 9-pin serial adapter. If your computer unfortunately does not have a 9-pin serial port, we recommend obtaining a serial to USB conversion adapter. Now on your screen, you should see an image of all of these cables and adapters connected together going from the FDR back over into a laptop. Please note that everything that's mentioned in this video is taken from the RS-232C communication manual located on the Keyance.com website. Now let's take a look at how we connect the FDR and transfer data. The first step is to locate the name of the port that your USB to serial adapter is connected to. In this case, you can see in parentheses it is labeled as COM7. This will be needed later on. If you do not immediately see your USB to serial adapter under ports, it may be listed under other devices and in this case, you'll need to go to the company of the adapter's website to see if they have a driver that you can install on your computer so that it understands how to communicate with this third-party adapter. Now that we know what cables and adapters are needed and which port we're connected to on our computer, we can take a look at the PuTTY settings and start configuring those. The two biggest causes of data transfer failures come from either an incorrectly selected COM port or mismatched settings between PuTTY and the FDR. So the first thing we're going to change is connection type to serial. This allows us to enter the communications port that we're connected to with our adapter. In my case, COM7. Now we can come over to category underneath serial. Change our baud rate or speed to what it is by default in the FDR, which is 115200. We're going to change our parity to even and our flow control to none. This just allows for seamless communication between the two devices. We can see our speed actually did change from what it was previously on the other screen. Just check our settings one more time and we can open up the terminal block so we can finish the settings on the FDR and begin a data transfer. To open the full time recording display, you'll need to hold mode down and up all together for three to five seconds. This will ask you the date that you want to look at or anything before. We hold down mode. That'll bring us to whichever data we want to look at, in this case, total. Tap mode to select the interval. So in this case, for total, we can look at day, week, or month. We're going to select day. Then we can go to the full communication settings. Select yes. Make sure that that baud rate matches that on PuTTY. Make sure we're looking at whatever data we want to look at. Tap mode. and Everything will then send over into the computer. As we can see, all the data has been transferred from the FDR to the PuTTY software terminal screen. Everything is separated with commas, hence it being a CSV or comma separated values file. We can see total per day, per week, and per month. And I understand there's a couple other different data types that we can pull from the FDR. Each one of those is going to be represented differently in this terminal block. So it is important to look at that communications manual so you understand what data you need and how that data is going to be transmitted back to your computer. One last thing to note is that the FDR records all of this data and information in five minute intervals. This cannot be changed. It is a fixed number. 
You can, however, look at the data in a day, week, or month interval. Before finishing up this video, let's talk about events really quick. You can see the different event types in the chart listed on the screen. These are the only events that we can pull from an FDR. So if you're looking to see when an output turns on or if you get a particular error, this is when you would use events. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any follow-up questions, please reach out to your product specialist, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.